Monoculture means one crop, one species of crop being grown at a time. So we have agriculture, but we have agriculture of one crop that is a monoculture, as a paired to, compared to, say, a polyculture, which would be growing multiple species at one time. Now, if we go back to the Native Americans, they used to grow what was called the three sisters. That was corn, beans, and squash. And there was a very good reason for growing those particular species. Corn produced starch. Uh, beans enriched the soil, plus produced uh, beans that could be eaten, which actually was a very good complementary food to corn. And, uh, and the squash plants produced another kind of food, plus the big leaves on the squash plant shaded the ground. And together, they were a relatively healthy farming system. But growing more than one crop on a piece of land, intercropping, for example, where there's alternating rows of crop, is hard to um, harvest. Um, it's not as efficient. It's better for the soil, but you know, if we've got fertilizers and we've got water, then do we really need to worry about the soil as much? So in, <clears throat> in an effort to grow vast quantities of some commodity crop like corn, uh, the monoculture is really the most efficient way to do it in the short run. And it takes very large machinery, very large expensive machinery. And expensive machinery is not typically set up to handle multiple crops in a field. Um, <clears throat> and so we have gone in literally every part of commercialized agriculture toward the monoculture approach. And it has pushed out a lot of what we used to call cash crops, uh, the crops that families would grow for themselves and maybe put in local markets. Uh, crops that some people might actually call food because most of the commodity crops are not food directly. They have to be processed and to become food. Um, but that is the way modern agriculture has gone. The foundation for agriculture is soil. And um, if there's one thing that farmers who are in touch with the land are concerned about, it is soil. Um, in, in fact, there are a number of farmers who are, they might call themselves organic, they might call themselves all natural farming. Uh, they don't even think of themselves as being farmers or ranchers. They think of themselves as being growers of grass because if you grow healthy grass, you can grow healthy cows, but you can only grow healthy grass if you have healthy soil. And so really what they're saying is, I care about the soil, and then everything else falls in place. The chemicals that we use are hostile to, to the soil community, and that is per tablespoon of soil, millions of bacteria, hundreds of different species of fungi, nematodes, um, invertebrates, um, you name it. A, a healthy soil has about 50% air space and might be only 20, 25% actually inorganic, like dirt, what we would think of as dirt, sand and silt and clay. About a quarter of it is organic material that's breaking down, it's dead stuff that's breaking down, and the bacteria and fungi are responsible for that and then a tremendous amount of biological activity, and then a whole bunch of airspace. So if we think of, of good, healthy, living soil, there's not a whole lot of dirt in there. When we look at farm soil of today, we see dirt. Uh, there's almost no biological activity at all. There's very little organic material. We're seeing dirt. Um, and so that's the big difference between healthy soil and sort of modern farm soil is that it's lacking the living component, and the living component is really what helps plants grow better than anything else. Plus, it enriches the soil and keeps the soil healthy. And the chemicals we use from fumigants to uh, insecticides, pesticides, herbicides, they all, they, and fertilizers, by the way, fertilizers are almost always salts. And the salts are toxic. Uh, <clears throat> to the things living in the soil. All of these things have fairly negative effect and some way more than others, but the end result is 
when we plow the soil, we, we, we make dark soil into light soil, we make uh, um, cool soil into hot soil, we expose it to the sunlight. When we do all of those things to soil, we're, 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 we're making life extraordinarily hostile to bacteria and fungi, and then we're using lots of chemicals on top of that. Um, literally, we kill the soil, and we're paying the consequences of that now, I think, in agriculture. No-till farming is farming that doesn't turn the soil upside down. Um, it's a very hard habit for farmers to break because farmers, I think, really do love plowing. Um, they get a great deal of, of sort of, uh, it's almost like artistic expression. They get a, a great deal of satisfaction from seeing a straight plow line and a field that's just clean and pretty and ready for crops. I know for, from experience that farmers love this, to see that. They think that's a good look. No-till farming is hard because it's telling the farmers, stop doing that. Um, it's bad for the soil. It'll destroy the soil. It has destroyed the soil. And if you want to make your soil healthy again, you have to stop turning the soil upside down every year, two, three times a year, and let it do what soil does, which is stay in one place and be home to millions and millions of living organisms that don't thrive on soil that gets turned upside down every year. Uh, it's being used more and more. It's very good for soil, but it's a very hard habit for farmers to break, especially in the world of annual crops, where every year the, the field has to be prepared for the next crop. They are a problem for growing. That is true. Uh, Herbicide-resistant weeds are essentially the same as herbicide-resistant insects. Uh, they are plants that have been hit with some kind of chemical stress, and there was a mutation for some kind of resistance or tolerance to that stress. Um, the plant maybe didn't take up the chemical. It wasn't affected by the chemical. Maybe it could break down the chemical. Uh, there are any number of ways how it can get around the toxic effects of an herbicide, but if there is uh, some genetic variation that allows the plant to survive that threat and continue to produce seeds, those are resistant plants and they will take over because it will either take another chemical or another approach to control them because that one chemical is not going to work. I don't know how many chemicals are sprayed on our crops these days. I will say that with the advent of biotechnology in, in crop plants, particularly in uh, a Roundup Ready plants, for example, <clears throat> Monsanto created Roundup Ready crops, uh, um, about a half dozen of them, all of them commodity crops, and that meant that, um, that Roundup didn't have to be, the farmer didn't have to spray Roundup on the crop prior to planting farmer could plant the crop, wait until it emerged, and the weeds emerged, and then hit the weeds with Roundup, didn't have to worry about the crop. The problem with that was that every farmer that was using Roundup Ready seeds w went from using perhaps several herbicides, depending on what the problem was, to one herbicide, because that one herbicide killed everything but the, pl the crop plant, and as a result, within just a very short uh, uh, amount of time, we had resistant s species uh, to Roundup. And there are currently, th uh, last I looked, 32 different species in the world that are resistant to Roundup and about 24 of them in the United States. But if even one plant in a field is resistant to Roundup, then that means there's one plant running wild. We have reduced the number to by, by using genetically modified crops, and it has made the problem, if anything, a little bit worse just because of that dependency on that one chemical. Um, we have, but I can say that there are uh, almost 30 different classes of herbicides, and there are about 30 classes of insecticides. Uh, one of the problems with herbicides that we're now encountering is that there hasn't been a new one put on the market in over 20 years. So we have what we have in the arsenal, and it's very likely the arsenal is going to be depleted.